In today's video, we're going to be going over Hooke's Law and Spring Constant. And the goal for this video is that you will understand what the Spring Constant is and also that you will understand how to calculate the Spring Constant. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please subscribe, click on the notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to share this video. Also, I have produced a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, notes, other assignments, practice problems, digital activities that you can do, and all of that is available at my Teachers Pay Teachers Store. You can link to that in the description below. And of course, I've made a bunch of other videos having to do with Hooke's Law, Springs, Simple Harmonic Motion, Pendulum, and there are some links to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Now, before we get started, I just want to point out that everything that I'm going to go over in this video is applicable to springs that are vertical and springs that are horizontal. In this video, I'm going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Simulations from the University of Colorado Boulder. There's their website. They have excellent, excellent simulations. Check them out whether you're teaching or learning. You're sure to find something. Whether the spring is horizontal or vertical, all of these calculations and principles apply in both cases. Okay, now here we go. This is Hooke's Law. This is Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law said the force from the spring is equal to minus the spring constant. We'll go over this in just a moment. K is the spring constant. X is the change in the length or the extension or the compression of that spring. There's a negative sign here. This negative sign simply tells you that this force is in the opposite direction as the spring force. You pull in one direction, the spring pulls in the other direction. You push in one direction, the spring pulls, pushes in the opposite direction. Okay? It's not like it's negative or less than zero. All right? Now, this is what this equation stands for. Fs is the force exerted by the spring, and that is measured in newtons. K is the spring constant, which we'll talk about again in just a few moments. K is the spring constant. It is measured in newtons per meter. X is the change in the length, whether it's the extension and it's getting longer or the compression and it's getting shorter. It's the change in the length of the spring, and that must be measured in meters. Okay? Now, what Hooke's Law really tells us is that the force needed to extend or compress a spring by some distance is directly proportional to that distance. Okay, what does that mean, all that distance and extension and compression? Well, that means that if you apply a greater force, the spring is going to get longer or shorter. Apply a greater force, you're gonna have a greater change in length of the spring. Okay, it could be in the y direction, it could be in the x direction, it's just the change in the length. Typically, this equation incorporates an x into the equation, not a y. Or oppositely, if you are opposite of that, if you apply less force, then there's going to be less change in length, less compression, less extension. Okay, that should be pretty straightforward. That's what we mean by directly proportional. Most people have some experiences with springs already, and you understand if you pull a spring, you make it longer. If you squeeze a spring, you can make it shorter. All right. Now, here is some more information about the spring constant. Here's the equation we said for Hooke's Law. The force is equal to the spring constant, negative the spring constant, times x. If we want to talk about what the spring constant means, then we're going to solve this e equation for the spring constant. We're going to leave the minus sign off. We get that the spring constant is equal to the force from the spring divided by the change in the length of that spring. And the units for that are newtons because force is in newtons, change in length is in meters, and that means that the K has the constant newton meters, and you can see that's like how many newtons it takes to change the length of the spring one meter. We can write that down, for example, like this. You could have a spring that has a spring constant of 3.25 newton meters. The stiffer the spring, the higher the spring constant. The softer the spring, the lower the spring constant. The stiffer the spring, the more force it takes to change it one meter the softer the spring, the less force it's going to take to change it its length, less force it's going to take to change its length by a certain distance, in this case, meters. Okay? In this case, meters. K is the spring constant. It is measured in newtons per meter. 
I like to just say it's the measure of the stiffness of the spring, or that's what you often see in the books. It's a measure of the stiffness of the spring, how stiff it is, how soft it is, how soft it is. I like to say it's the amount of force needed to stretch the spring one meter. You can see right there it says Newton meter. It's like Newtons per meter. Here it takes 3.25 Newtons of force to change the length of the spring by one meter. Okay, now we don't have a lot of springs that you might see in school or in instruction that are going to change one meter, but if you wanted to change it one meter, you can use that, and we can use the spring constant to calculate the changes in length based on meters, which based on the amount of force, which we'll do in just a moment. Okay, now we are going to go to the simulation that we're going to go to for a PHET simulation, and it looks like this. Now, this is a spring. We can change the stiffness of the spring over here. We can make it softer, you can see it gets thinner, or we can make it stiffer and it gets heavier. For this part of the video, I'm gonna set it at setting number four. This is one, two, three, and four. And what I'm going to do is, we're gonna now determine the spring constant for the spring, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put different masses on this spring. Here's my mass right here. And put the mass on the spring. I can get it to stop like that. I can change the mass and it will extend more or if I change the mass and make it less then it will extend less like that bouncing around like that. I can stop it like that. I'm going to put different masses on and we're going to measure the change in the length of the spring. Here's the ruler we're going to use. Now this simulation has all the PHET simulations are very nice. This has a line you can set that will show you the unstretched length it will also have a line that will show you the resting position, where it is after it's had the mass attached to it. You can see I can take the mass off. That's the unstretched length. I'm gonna put the ruler as best as I can right like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna start out with 50 grams like that. And I'm actually gonna start with 50. I'm gonna start with 100 grams like that. And you can see if I have that spring 100 grams, then I get a change in length that's 10, 15, 16 and a half, I'm gonna write that down. 100 grams corresponds to a change in length of 16.5 centimeters. Now, we're gonna add some more mass. And what do you think is gonna to happen to the length of the spring? I'm gonna double the mass. I'm gonna go from 100 to 200 grams. With 100 grams, I got 16.5 centimeters of extension. What do you think the extension is gonna be when I put 200 grams on. Well, lo and behold, you probably got it right. It's going to be two times 16.5, which is just about 33 centimeters. So now I have 200 grams. I got 33 centimeters of extension. Okay, now I'm going to go all the way to 300 grams, and you can see now I have three times 16.5 or 49.5 centimeters of extension. Okay, so those are my three data points, or those are the three values that I'm gonna to use to calculate the spring constant of that spring. So now we're gonna go back to the presentation, just like this, hopefully, and we're gonna to go to the next slide like that, and you can see here we have our data table. I put on 100 grams, 16.5 centimeters. I have 200 grams, 33 centimeters. I have 300 grams. 49.5 centimeters. Now, we're gonna determine the spring constant. The spring constant is the force in newtons divided by the length in meters. That means I have to convert my grams first from grams to kilograms and then to newtons of force. And then we're gonna convert the lengths from centimeters to meters and then we can divide and see what the spring constant was or what the spring constant is. All right, now let's just do that. Uh, mass, I'm gonna change grams to kilograms. This is 100 grams. All I'm gonna do is divide by 1,000. Hopefully you can do that already, and you get that the mass is 0 0.10, 0 0.20, and 0 0.30. Now, to get to the force, I have to multiply that mass in kilograms, not in grams, in kilograms, by 9.81 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to gravity. And essentially, that is Newton's second law, F equals ma. But in this case, because we're talking about gravitational acceleration and force downward due to gravity, we multiply by g. So for each of those values, 
0.1, and 0 0.3, I'm going to multiply that by 9.81. And if I multiply this by 9.81, then I get 0 0.981. If I multiply 0 0.2, I get 1.962. And if I multiply 0 0.3, then I get 2.943. So those are my forces. Because when we calculate the spring constant, we have to m divide the force by the change in length in meters. We've got to convert these to meters, divide each of these by uh, 100, 0 0.165, 0 0.33, 0 0.495. Okay, now we have the data we need to calculate the spring constant. And I'm going to calculate the spring constant three times. And because it's one spring, it's the same spring at the same setting, I should get the same answer all three times. Here's Hooke's law. Remember, we're going to solve for the spring constant. The spring constant is going to be k equals the force divided by the change in the length. So for the first one, I'm going to take 0 0.981, divide that by 0 0.165, and you will see that I get that the spring constant is 5.95 newtons per meter. It takes 5.95 newtons to change the length of that spring one meter. Okay, let's just do the other two. We should get the same answer. Okay, because it's a proportionality, as the force increases, there's a linear relationship between the force and the change in the length. So as the force increases, then the length increases by uh, equal amount, proportionally, and you see we get the same thing, and then we get the same thing for the third one like that. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the force, dividing by the change in length in meters, force, length in meters, force, length in meters, and you can see that is the spring constant like that. Okay, now let's go back to our presentation, or excuse me, to our simulation, and let's do another spring just for the heck of it. Okay, now for this one, I believe I'm going to set this one at setting number eight. So I'm gonna set this at number eight, and this time I'm going to add 50 grams, excuse me, and you can see I get a change in length of five centimeters. Now I'm going to move it all the way up to 200, okay? I'm going to change it up to 200, and then I'm going to see what I get here for 200. I'm going to get uh, just about 20, and then I'm going to go up to 250 this time. I'm not going to go up to 300, and you can see now I get a change in length of just about I said that was 24.5. Okay, so once again, we can go back and we can calculate the spring constant. You see we have a stiffer spring. As we increase the number, then the spring gets stiffer. We had it at 8. It gets stiffer. It gets harder to stretch. And it's, therefore, it's going to have a higher spring constant, hopefully. All right, so let's go back to our uh, presentation. And let's go to the next slide, and you can see here the values that we had. We had 50 grams and 5 centimeters, 200 grams and 20, and 250 and 24.5. All right? Now, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to get the mass in kilograms, divide by 1,000, multiply the kilogram mass times 9.81. We get the force in newtons. We're going to convert our distances into meters. Remember, this one is not 0.5, this is 0.2, and this is 0.245, but this one is, you divide by 100, so it's 0 0.05. And then, once again, we can just go through and calculate, and you can see we get a higher spring constant. Now, because of the readings from the spring, they weren't perfectly exactly right, which is kind of nice because nothing in real life works out perfectly exactly right. But you can see we get 9.82 newtons per meter, 9.81, and in this case, this was 10.0. Basically, these numbers for our computations and for what we did are exactly the same. So this spring has a spring constant. Now you can take the average, if you want, of somewhere right about 9.9 .9 newtons per meter. Okay, so there you go. That is how, that's what the spring constant is. It tells you the stiffness of the spring. It tells you how much force is needed to uh, extend the spring a certain distance. It could also be if you had a, a horizontal spring, how much force it takes to compress the spring. And therefore, I, we went through in there. After that, we went through and I showed you how to calculate 
the spring constant based on collecting the mass and the change in length in centimeters. If you're not given the force, you gotta take the mass and convert it into the force, and you gotta make sure that the change in length is not in centimeters, but in meters. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things or five things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a comment. Please give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.